Welcome to the Audio Codes UK video tip series. In this video we're going to show you just how easy it is to set up and configure an Audio Codes SPC. Contrary to popular belief, you can do it in about 45 seconds, maybe a tiny bit more with the, the narration. So let's go. So this is the scenario we're going to be using. So on the left hand side we have a LAN with an IP PBX and some IP telephones. And then we have an Audio Codes SPC in the middle with one interface connected to the LAN and one interface connected to the DMZ going through a router and firewall down to a SIP trunk and often to the internet and then to the ITSP and then down to the PSDN so the phone calls will flow through there. So once the basic setup is done and the wires are plugged in we need to connect in to the audio codes SPC and to do that we're going to use the SPC configuration wizard. It's just a normal Windows for application so we open the application and we click on next. In here we first select the audio codes SPC we're going to be managing. So we're going to select the audio codes virtual edition or VE and select the correct firmware version. So we're using 7.2 here. And then put in a, a uh, end customer name. So we'll just type demo here. At this stage we can connect to the device or load a file, but this is the default configuration. So we're just going to go next and click on. First of all, we set up the general scenario. So in this case, we're going to do a SIP trunk, IP PBX to SIP trunk, but we can choose other things like remote workers and stuff as well. So we configure the IP PBX, and here's a wide list of all the IP PBXs we work with and have interop templates with. So Link 2010, 2013, Skype for Business, and all the other uh, PBX manufacturers we've worked with. Same with the SIP trunk. We click on the SIP trunk, and again, there's a list of all the SIP trunks we've certified and interoperated with uh, around the world. So we're just in this case, we'll pick a generic SIP trunk. And then we'll click on Next. Nothing to do on this screen. It's all defaults for OK. So on this screen, we're going to set up the IP address of the LAN interface on the SPC. So that's 10.1.10.75. Select the correct, sub, correct subnet mask, 2.2.5.0. Don't need a gateway. And off we go. We're now going to set up the WAN interface. This is the one that connects to the DMZ and into the firewall. Um, so that's 157, 157, 157, 75. Again, set the uh, subnet mask up correctly. And again, don't need a default gateway for this. So we'll just click on Next. Now we're going to set up the IP PBX configuration. This is the IP address of the IP PBX. So we know how to talk to it. So that's 10, 1, 10, 100. We can do things like have backup addresses and keep alive if we need to. Also select the transport type if you want secure RTP and the number of sessions. Again, defaults are fine here. Now we set the IP address of the SIP trunk. This is the IP address of the uh, SIP trunk provider we're going to be talking to. That's 157.157.157.100. And again, we can do keep alives. We can define different destination ports. We also can set up registration or authentication if we need, but we don't need to in this case. Almost there now. We're just going to set up some number manipulations. Our IP PBX uses E164 numbering, so we need to strip off these because the SIP trunk provider doesn't like them. So any time we see a plus four four, we're going to strip three digits and put a zero in. And the same for the calling number, the strip plus four four, remove three digits, add a zero. So we don't need to worry about incoming calls at this moment. We don't have any remote users, so we click through and that's it. Configuration done. You can see the configuration here in a bit of detail, but we'll just go next. And now we're going to either save a file or push to the device. And what we'll do is load it down to the device, just send it down. And you can see now it's waiting to be configured and waiting to be reset. So, OK, we waited a couple of minutes and it's been reset. We can now open up a web browser directly onto the device and log in with the default login and password. And here's the uh, new interface so configuration wizard. And we'll go straight through to the monitor page. And here you can see the dashboard where you can see the number of active calls, these things like the ASR, the average call duration, etc. So what we'll do now is we'll do a quick test call. I've got a Windows machine that's pretending to be a telephone on the IP PBX, another Windows machine that's pretending to be the telephony ITSP. So we'll run the test call through just so you can see this actually is real. So left hand side, this is the pretend IP PBX telephone. Right hand side, this is the telephone on the far side of the telephony service provider. So I make a phone call to the IP address at the LAN address. And you see the phone call goes straight through. If you wait a second, 
on the SBC panel you can see that one call has just come up now so it's monitoring the call running through it so it's a real configuration I've actually made a SIP call right through I break the call and you can see after the screen refresh it goes away and there's no call anymore so that was a complete setup of the SBC so I hope you found this useful we'll do many other video tips at some point in the future just let us know what you want comment or um, send us an email and we'll do what we can to help that's all bye for now